Hello, welcome back to Free to Slay. This is Dark Seal, and we are back in Star Trek Online. And I am showing you the Tier 2 ship that I've picked out. But first, I am going to switch back to my original outfit build of my character. I'm going from short round to the super tall Amazonian behemoth woman that I made before. Yeah. It's pretty cool. They give you uh, two slots at the beginning to make a character. I think one slot, of course, at the beginning, and somewhere along the line you'll run into a tutorial mission, quote-unquote, where you basically find this dude and you're able to make another character uh, look and load out. And you do get a third if you join a fleet, which I haven't done yet simply because I didn't know the game well enough to decide to join a bunch of people and uh, in a fleet. But I'm running into the Admiral's office here to get my new ship. So basically he tells me to uh, go to the shipyard and that's where I'll be able to pick up my new beast. I've kind of been guilty of only reading the green text which I'm sure a lot of you out there are guilty of as well. Sometimes I get into it and read everything, just want to make sure I don't miss stuff. But sometimes at the end of the day I just breeze through, read green text, must get to next level. And sometimes I play late at night so there I even had to check the mini map to see who it is I'm supposed to talk to so here's the girl now I am lieutenant commander and I'm gonna browse through these ships right here I have been really torn on what to get because this uh, these cruisers they are the iconic, here, let me make sure I'm searching only for my rank. I don't want to be looking at all the eye candy, stuff I can't have. Oh, like this, like these. That's the goal, that's the end game right there. But let's, let's keep our eyes on, on right now. So I've been really torn on, do I go cruiser. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I don't want to go escort. I mean, it, it sounds like it could be fun buzzing in, buzzing out, but I tend to tank a little bit too much, take too many hits, so uh, I decided not to escort. But the science vessel sounds like my style of gameplay. Um, and actually, right now, I have two science bridge officers, so... I think it might be fate at this point that I'm gonna go science vessel. I like to have some extra extra moves, some extra skills that I can rely on in the in the heat of battle. But you know the cruiser is just so tempting with uh, all its hull strength and how many people you can have on board and. But, in the end, I do go Science Vessel. Now, I, I don't exactly know how many uh, tiers of, of ships there are to go through. Uh, I know there's four. I, I don't know. Is there five? You know, I, I, 
I haven't really, again, I'm not really uh, super in tune with uh, all of the the facts of Endgame, and uh, you know, I've seen a couple other shows out there that, I mean, really get into the nitty gritty of of the math of things. Uh, you know, telling you what you need to do on which ship, and you you know, what what kind of shields you need, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but right now, since uh, I'm a lowly level 10 lieutenant commander, which sounded great just a minute ago, but after you look at those uh, those big ships, you know, you realize you you haven't done anything yet. But uh, I am just taking a look, making a hundred percent sure. Yeah, I'm take. I guess I'm I'm choosing more on how does this ship look rather than what what does it really do. But I went out there, just took a, a quick peek at uh, the positives and negatives and what you'll really be expecting uh, from these ships and. You know, cruisers can uh, dish out a lot of damage. They can take a lot of damage, uh, but you are kind of sluggish. Your snail, and since the cruiser had uh, a slower, like even turning radius, uh, than my tier one ship, and I thought that was really feeling like I'm stuck in molasses that I, I just needed something a little faster just just even if it's just the tiniest bit faster I needed to uh, just just have something that that didn't feel like a, a snail sometimes so I'm going science and since my first ship is the morning star I have now the morning star 2 or II and the registry number I didn't quite get. I thought I was supposed to put another number in there. Obviously, I am not entirely remembering all the lore when I'm playing the video game because everybody knows it's got a letter at the end. So, X. Since I am... Generation X, I will put an X. There we go, the USS Morning Star 2. Pretty sweet. I can see how people can burn through hours and hours of Star Trek Online when you really get into it. So far, as far as role-playing games go, this is the only game so far that I would even be remotely tempted on uh, putting a couple of dollars in to, uh, I don't know, maybe not even level up faster, but just get some of the, the shinier toys. Maybe later on down the load I'll, I'll uh, put in five bucks or something maybe when I can have the the top vessel as I can see uh, can see all the cool stuff in there so here you know I'm, I'm cutting out a lot of the uh, the slower parts here but just real quick uh, I do realize that I now need to equip my ship. So I go through the rundown of taking all my old parts from the older ship, slapping them on the new ship, putting all the stuff that uh, was lower grade that I'd kept back onto my old ship just to, just to have it out of my inventory but not really uh, recycle it or sell it off. And some stuff you can't even sell off. Um, so I put all my old stuff in the old ship. New stuff in the new ship. I think I even need to acquire a uh, 
another science console somewhere. I'm sure I'll, I'll pick one up somewhere along the line. Now one thing that I've really been guilty of here is going into a turbo lift when all I need to do is hit the little button at the top left of the minimap to beam out to my ship. And I see somebody's pet behind me. I've only seen a couple of pets so far in this game. Uh, so I imagine they, they exist and they're out there. Don't know that I particularly would want one, but... Uh, so here is my new ship in all its glory. Taking a look, I got the name on the on the hood. It's all good in the hood. And then me next to some sort of weird odd energy blob. Now she's a beauty, but now I realize that uh, I didn't do any true customization on the outside of the ship. Nowhere along the line did I uh, see the option while picking the ship to do that. And I see my science vessel's got a little bit of extra bonus and auxiliary power, which is, which is pretty cool. I don't know what that does yet, but I heard it does something. So... Glad to see a little little stat boost in there. But before I really get out of the soul system, I need to go back and customize. Because I don't I don't really want the default nacelle and all that stuff. So having only done this once before when I created the original ship you know it took me a a second to realize I need to click on that advanced tab and this is where a lot of the time goes because there's nothing more important than how other people see my ship and I also realized that I have not gone into my ship's interior at all uh, I don't really know what there is to do there. I've only uh, just found out about the crew assignments, which I'm sure I'll do a little rundown next time on the crew assignments. Nice little way to pick up a couple extra points here and there and um, some extra items and whatnot while you're not even playing the game which was uh, really cool to find out so I promise that uh, this customization isn't gonna last too long just a couple of more minutes but I wanna give you guys a, a peek at uh, the different types I like the the fat chunky what does that say? Quasar? That look is, is pretty cool. I think I like my original Nova saucer. Pick the original Nova stocky pylons and uh, the quasar hull kinda of fat stocky looks like you could take a beating a little aggressive it's fun to really customize that out And then, of course, the patterns. Uh, patterns I didn't care so much about. Although, uh, you know, I did go through and pick some. I think I went with uh, Cypress. I think that's called Cypress. And 
probably Centaur, Centaurus. Kind of mix and match those two. But I'll, I'll skip ahead a little bit. Trying out the different colors, see what kind of difference that makes. Now, for some reason in the in the game, I was uh, getting a lot of lag when I was building the ship, and I'm glad to see a lot of it didn't translate into the recording. But I don't know, maybe the servers were just really busy. I'm really happy to see that this is an actual, you know, a really populated game. There has never been a time where I've gone into a system or a block on the map that I haven't seen somebody else. Sure, maybe I might have ended up in uh, a little planetary system somewhere uh, where I haven't seen somebody. But if I'm traveling around, there's never been more than 30 seconds, or maybe even less than that, that I haven't uh, bumped into another ship. So, it's good to know, good to feel like there's some, some future in gameplay when you're, you're investing some time. So, here she is. This is the Morningstar 2. Tier 2 ship, science vessel. I also realize at this point that I have not reassigned my officers to their stations which I, I did figure out a couple of minutes after uh, recording this gameplay. But I am happy with the look, happy with the ship. Just checking out the turning radius. And uh, having, uh, frankly, a little bit of ship envy. When I look down at that massive fleet of, of ships there, I start clicking on everybody's stuff that, that looks good. Seeing everybody at their level 50 vice admiral positions. So, there's some, some nice funky looking ships out there. And here, I probably see there's a little bit of a chop left in the gameplay, which is to be expected when you've got all these people sitting in the same area. So, I like to say a lot of time that this system, this uh, Sol, the home planet here, Earth, um, runs pretty smoothly, but there is some chop at times. So yeah, next time I will give you a rundown on uh, the crew, the assignments, show you the little starter pack of people that I that I got, and show you how to get some some points when you're you're not even playing the game, which is really neat. Something I kind of stumbled up on uh, upon on accident, and uh, sure, if you want to read. Yeah, you'll find it, but who wants to do that? It was a game, not a book. Anyway, this has been Free to Slay. I'm Dark Seal. I'll see you again real soon. Subscribe if you want to see future footage. See you guys later.